So, all right, so I don't have a, an axe, but still my goal is to scare the crap out of you. So I'm gonna talk about basically four different ways that computers interacting with stuff can uh, ruin your life or kill you. I'm gonna talk about government, healthcare, critical infrastructure, and stuff that you actually own, like cars. So starting with government, government computers have traditionally been for about two things from the outset. The first is counting people, which is kind of boring, but it, it's important as, you know, history. Herman Hallreth, 19, or 1890s census calculating machine, blah, 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 punch cards, blah, 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 blah. Okay, but they're also for killing people. The very first, <clears throat> the very first all electronic general purpose computer was the ENIAC, which was designed to uh, figure out how to fire shells so that they land on people, and they also used it to build the H-bomb. So there's a pretty proud history there. Uh, now, instead of calculating the trajectories of the things, they actually fire the missiles themselves while flying around. And the actual number of people that the, the Predator drones and the UAVs have killed is classified, but we know it's more than zero, so, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Moving on to healthcare, so insulin pumps are a really valuable alternative to multiple daily injections for the treatment of type 1 diabetes. Uh, but you need to configure them per person, and you need to tell them when you're eating, and things like that. Uh, so there are interfaces for communicating with them, and some of these are wireless. Uh, they forgot to use security. So uh, some people from Oak Ridge National Labs have figured out how to wirelessly cause an island service, so turn them off and make them not give you insulin when you need it, give you insulin when you don't need it, which is bad, and uh, steal your protected health information, which is also bad. Uh, it doesn't happen a lot that these things break, but when they do break, it's very, very serious if you don't catch it in time. I had an acquaintance in high school who died when she passed out behind the wheel when her uh, insulin pump malfunctioned. So it's a big deal when that happens. Uh, okay, we have these things called implantable cardioverter defibrillators, ICDs. Think of them kind of like pacemakers. Uh, they are programmed and communicate wirelessly because you don't really want to have to have surgery every time your doctor wants to check out what's going on with the thing. But they also kind of forgot the security part. So uh, some researchers a couple years ago figured out you can wirelessly turn the things off wirelessly make them shock people into beef it. Uh, you can drain the batteries, and again, you can steal the logs off of them. Um, and that's the equipment plugged into a laptop that they used for it. Okay, critical infrastructure. So this is like an industrial strength uh, power generator. Uh, you can't just buy these at Home Depot. You know, you have to order them. Uh, and then they're made at the factory, and six months later you get it. And this is a picture of one being blown up by a laptop. Um, the davis Bessey nuclear power plant in Ohio in 2003, its safety computer systems were taken offline for about five hours when somebody plugged a thumb drive with the, with the, with the slammer worm on it into a computer there, and it... Okay, so why is this important? Obviously the nuclear power plant thing is important, but why can power outages kill you? Well, uh, we'll talk about New York City. This is pretty scary stuff. Power failure blacks out New York, thousands trapped in subways, once more with looting, state troopers sent into city. But there's another, there's another interesting thing that can happen. In the, in the, the power outage in the Northeast in 2003, which incidentally was caused partly by software error, uh, health researchers noticed that there was a marked, or at least noticeable, increase in diarrheal illness. And some, some people think that if there's a long power outage in New York City, there will be a cholera outbreak. <coughs> Uh, so, there are programmable computers in basically every modern car. Uh, these are all from diesel trucks, but there's something similar in everybody's cars. And some researchers earlier this year wrote a piece of malware that they called Car Shark. Uh, you'll notice uh, 140 degrees park. Um, and, and, and this is the scariest sentence I have ever read in an academic paper. They could do all sorts of crap. We did not anticipate that we would be able to create unsafe conditions of such magnitude. Uh, a couple years ago, this is more in the realm of ruining your life and killing you. There was a breathalyzer, and, and it turns out that once the source code was released after a lengthy trial process, it was horrible. It didn't do math right. Uh, <laughs> The Epilepsy Foundation's support forums had a security vulnerability, and some people hacked in and made flashing color things. <laughs> it gave a bunch of people migraines and some people seizures, which is serious. Uh, and laptop batteries explode, so that's one that is maybe more relevant to most of your lives. They fixed it, but uh, it's still something that can happen, <clears throat> which isn't which isn't great. So. 
what exactly is it that we do about all of these ways that computers and security problems can kill us? Well, the government and regulatory agencies have a role to play. We need to get the FDA to regulate the security, not only the safety of implantable medical devices, and we need to make sure that we can get the source code of anything that the cops are going to use to arrest you, like breathalyzers, without a lengthy and expensive court fight. And you really need to be careful. If you have a device that can kill you, like your car, you need to be careful where you put it and who works on it. Thank you.